So as the title of this video suggests, uh, I bought some land in Thailand. Uh, so here it is. This is uh, our little piece of Thailand. If you are thinking of buying land or tossing up between renting or buying land, um, you know, for heaven's sake, do your research. All right, welcome back. Uh, it's been a while since the last video. Uh, and for good reason, uh, a lot has changed. Uh, for one, this one has grown up very quickly without my permission. Um, and also, as the title of this video suggests, uh, I bought some land in Thailand. The land is not actually for me. I didn't buy it for myself. Uh, I bought it for this one. So she doesn't own it yet, but uh, one day, one day she will. So, most of you would know that foreigners cannot own land in Thailand. So, let me tell you how I went about things. Now, number one, I am not a property expert. Uh, none of this is intended as financial advice. This is just my story about a young Australian father coming to Thailand and, and uh, bought some land for this one. So in this video, I will tell you how much I paid for the land. And you know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the decision making, bless you. I'll talk about the decision making uh, process, you know, behind the whole thing. Um, and I'll also, I'll cover off the three ways that I know that foreigners can buy land in Thailand. So when I talk about land, I'm talking about uh, actual land or a house on land. So condos, I'm not talking about condos, that's something totally different. Uh, condos under Thai law, as long as uh, certain criteria are met, foreigners can own condos in their own name. So they can hold the title, no problem. Uh, land is totally different. It's very different. So, let me set the scene here. So, we have been living here in Pattaya for about eight, nine months. And family of three, uh, we're currently renting this house. It's a three bedroom house, nice little house. And before you get excited, uh, no, uh, I didn't buy this house. <laughs> and no, the land that I bought is not in Pattaya. So just to clear that up. The land that we actually bought is in Northeast Thailand. So Isan area. Uh, it's about I don't know, eight, nine hours drive from here. And yeah, Northeast Thailand. That is where this story begins. So what I'll do, Let's roll the video and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. So here we are, Northeast Thailand. Uh, we are currently in the province of Nongbua Lampu. And even more specifically, the village of Pandon, or uh, Pandon village as it's known. Now, the, the word village gets uh, thrown around pretty loosely in Thailand, I've noticed. And I don't know, maybe my definition of village differs from most, but when I hear the word village, I think of Jean-Claude Van Damme kicking down a banana tree in that movie, uh, The Kickboxer. Um, that's, that's village to me. Uh, and, and as you can see, this doesn't really look like uh, The Kickboxer. <laughs> you know, you've got proper roads, 
proper houses with um, proper amenities and yeah it doesn't really look like uh, my version of a village this main soy goes down about uh, two blocks and as you get further down there's more houses and more streets that, that come off the main soy and population of this little village is about 260 uh, 260 270 people something like that so it's it's pretty small in terms of population and this house here where I'm pointing to there that is the house where my wife grew up uh, so she lived there you know pretty much since birth up until uh, adult years and every year the house or the family sort of gets together and reunites so for Songkran, Thai New Year, birthdays, things like that. Now this, I'll just show you around the, the village a little bit. This house here, this house is brand new. We came here last April and it was just being finished and when we were here they had a little ceremony I guess to like to bless the house and the whole uh, the whole community or the whole village comes um, and they do a ceremony uh, From memory, I think there were monks monks came and blessed the house as well So what they do the whole village comes around and circles the house three times and I, I don't know I guess it's just to wish the, the property good luck This house. Yeah um, It's just been finished up and the tradition is that the neighbors come around and they do some kind of ceremony. I'm, I'm not exactly sure all the details, but they walk around the house three times. They go inside and they have some food. So I was just there, um, but I'm not, I didn't stay for the food because I haven't showered yet. It's like seven in the morning. Um, but I thought I'd, I thought I'd take a video of it. Um, pretty much the whole, the whole, the whole neighborhood is, is here. So this, this is a street. And that's the house. So right across the road is the is the land that we bought. This main highway that cuts through the town. Uh, this is uh, according to Google Maps, it's Highway Two Two Eight. So twenty minutes to your left, uh, you get to pretty much the the town centre, so the CBD. And if you keep going uh, a further an hour about 60 k's down that way you'll you'll end up at uh, Udontani International Airport and then to your right if you head eight hours down that way you'll you'll end up in Bangkok the capital right, let's see if we can cross the road All right, so here it is this is uh, our little piece of Thailand. According to the land title, it's uh, one rai. So just, just over one rai. So in terms of, in terms of acres, it's probably about point, point, point three five to point four of an acre, something like that. I'll get into more details about the property and uh, what it what it costs and everything. Um, but first, I'll I'll go over well, the three options that uh, foreigners have in terms of buying property in Thailand. So, the golden rule is that under Thai law, foreigners cannot own land in Thailand directly. So. There's three ways to sort of get around that. Uh, number one, uh, you set up a Thai company with the help of a lawyer, and then through the company, the foreigner can hold the title uh, through the company. That's number one. Number two, uh, you buy the land through a Thai person, so that could be your wife or husband, and then they hold the title to the land. Uh, number three, 
uh, a foreigner is allowed to lease a piece of land or a house on land uh, for up to 30 years. So at the end of 30 years, they do have the option to renew that. So 30 plus 30, that's, that's 60 years that uh, they're able to lease the property. So all three options come with risks. So uh, option number one, through a lawyer, you set up a company, the land is, the, the land is owned by the, the company, and you as the foreigner hold the title through the company. So it sounds good, doesn't it? Well, what are the risks? So the risks are that under Thai law, a foreigner can only own or control 49% of the company. So the risk is that 51% share is Thai. So on paper, then you're, you're sort of open to fraud in that the property can be sold with or without your permission because you don't actually control the company. So, how do you mitigate that risk? Well, a good lawyer to start off with will set up the company in a way that even though you only control 49% of the company, they'll set it up in a way where the voting rights are in your favor. So you're, you're, you're kind of protected in that way. What's the other risks? The other risk would be uh, the Thai government loves to audit uh, shell companies that hold assets, hold property. So if they audit you and they see that uh, the company is not creating an income or creating a profit, they may, they may order you to, to close down the company, shut down the company. And then if that happens, then all assets owned by the company would need to be sold off. So that's the risk there. You run the risk of uh, being forced to sell. Option number two, buying through a Thai person. So let's say, for example, Freddie the foreigner comes to Thailand. He gets married to a Thai lady and he decides to buy a house on land in the name of the wife and they live happily ever after. Sounds good, right? So, what are the risks? Well, the risks are that the marriage doesn't last and the foreigner continues to not have any ownership rights over the land and it's really up to the uh, the Thai wife what happens to the land. She might decide to keep it and, and, and that's it, full stop. Or she might decide to uh, sell and and divvy up the the proceeds. Who knows? That's best case scenario. So that that is the main risk with uh, option number two. Um, how do you mitigate that risk? Well, you just you just don't do it. You <laughs> you find another way to 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 find land or buy land because under Thai law, if you get married and you buy it under her name, it's considered a gift. So you, you've got no legal standing on from that regard. Okay, so number three, option number three, uh, leasing the land long term. So this is more or less a safe way, or a safer way. So under Thai law, a foreigner is allowed to lease a house on land uh, for a maximum of 30 years. As long as the title of the land uh, remains under the Thai citizen. So, what are the risks? Well, the risk is that, let's say, the Thai owner that you originally made the, the deal with, the contract with, let's say they've passed away and the new owners are their, are their younger relatives, so son or daughter. And let's just say that that son or daughter doesn't want to continue the lease. They want to keep the land for themselves. What do you do? Well, you're screwed, pretty much. So how do you mitigate that risk? Well, again, with a good lawyer. Uh, a good lawyer will set up the agreement in a way where there's a clause somewhere written in there that you have the right to 
renew the lease at the end of the 30 year period. So that should cover that off. So which option did I go with? Well, I went with option number two. So this piece of land here, it's under my wife's name. Yeah, I mean, and that's it. I have no ownership rights over the land, but that's fine. So if we go back to the original purpose of me buying the land, the, the original purpose was to, to buy it and gift it to my daughter. So that was the whole purpose of, of buying this piece of land. And I'm confident that whatever happens to my marriage, whether it uh, is still intact or, or not, regardless of the status, whether I'm alive or not alive, I'm confident that the land will uh, end up with the person that it was intended for, um, my daughter Anna. So yeah, that, that's, that's, that was my choice and that's what I did. In terms of uh, price, what do we pay for this land? The asking price was uh, 2 million baht. But after, after a bit of to, to and fro, the missus got it down to 1.8. So 1.8 million, which I thought was pretty good. I mean, I was happy with 2 million. Um, that was my sort of, that was my budget for, for just land. There was a bit of talk of whether we should have bought a house or not. But uh, for me, like I have no intention of living here. Um, and a house, an empty house is just a headache because things fall apart if you don't use them. And then if you, if you decide to have tenants and, and whatnot, then there's a headache of finding tenants and maintenance and, and all that kind of stuff. So we, we went with land, you know, 1.8 million for, for this block, for this kind of size land in this sort of part of the world. Um, it is high end, like it is getting expensive. However, I mean, you, you can get a block of land this size in more or less the same area for about, probably about a quarter of the price. But you'll find that that pocket of land is in the middle of nowhere, man. Like, no access to roads. The only way to, to get to the, the piece of land is to put them some boots and, and muscle your way through someone else's land to get to your land, uh, if that makes sense. So use cases for the land is it's pretty limited. Like you wouldn't build a house on it because it's, it's, it's uh, located in the middle of nowhere. And I mean, just like, just like anywhere in the world, uh, a piece of land that's located close to amenities, close to roads, close to infrastructure is always going to cost a little bit more. With this piece of land, it, it sort of ticked a lot of boxes uh, in that... We're right on a highway here. Uh, it's on a corner block. And actually, it's, it's this road here, this little laneway wraps around the back. So it's, it's a unique piece of land in that we only have one neighbor. So that, that really appealed to me. And then the other thing, uh, the previous owner spent a bit of money on it because this so they built this brick wall all around the perimeter and then they just filled it, filled it with, uh, with more earth. So now it's, now it's actually level, whereas before it was sort of on a slope. So, you know, it's pretty much rock and roll. It's ready. All you need is a toothbrush and, and a house <laughs> and, and, and you're ready to go. Um, and the other important point, or the, the thing that pretty much sold, that sold us, was we are uh, just a stone's throw away from the family. So, you gentlemen out there who, who either have a Thai girlfriend or a Thai wife, you will know that these, uh, these uh, lovely people are very family orientated. So, in that regard, um, this deal, you know, it suited everyone. So, it was, it was good. I think that's it. Uh, if, you, if you watch right to the end, um, I hope you got something out of it. If you are thinking of buying land or tossing up between renting or buying land, you know, for heaven's sake, do your research, 
get some good advice, get a good lawyer, talk to someone who has already been through it. So talk, talk to another foreigner who, who, who's, who's bought land or who, who is leasing land and, and you'll get an idea of the pros and cons and, and all of that. All right, guys, I think I'm going to leave it off here. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.